There's a lot of buzz about air pollution these days. But did you know that the particulate pollution is one of the most dangerous forms of air pollution? So the question is, what is a particulate matter? Particulate matter is a tiny solid particle which is suspended in air. The average size of a particulate matter ranges between 1 to 100 microns. Every day we are breathing in particulate matter and depending on the size, they are settled in various parts of our body. The bigger particulate matter gets settled in our lungs. Finer particulate matter enter the bloodstream and we all need to start focusing more on the particulate matter. Because every day the particulate matter just silently infiltrates our body and cause various problems. Problems like asthma, COPD, lung cancer, etc. Today, I am here to present a solution. An innovative solution to tackle with this problem. Talking about my journey, this all began one summer evening. I was sitting in my science class and my teacher was teaching about the air pollution, the effects of air pollution and I was kind of bored and I started thinking, we are going on and on and on about air pollution every single day but why aren't we doing something about it? At that stage, the only pollutant which I knew was about the carbon dioxide and I thought planting more saplings would just solve this problem, why so much of a fuss? But that was not the case. When I studied in depth about the, about the pollutants, I came to know about the various variety of pollutants and most of them were more dangerous than the carbon dioxide and this is when I had a chance to learn about the particulate matter and this is when I started to work on the particulate matter. Initially the easiest source of particulate matter available for me was an old kerosene lamp which I found at home. What I did, I filled the lamp with kerosene and I used to light the lamp. It gave a big bright beautiful smoke completely filled with particulate matter. Now I had the source, I needed something to trap this particulate matter with. I tried all sorts of materials available at home. I saw a bit of success when I took a waste cloth, dipped it in used engine oil and just held it against the smoke. This could capture a teeny tiny amount of the particulate matter. But the problem was, after a duration, the cloth would be completely clogged and it could no longer be used. Thus, this idea did not have any industrial application. At that time, for a guy with zero research experience, no mentors to seek guidance, this indeed was a difficult journey. But I had one motto in mind, either I win or I learn something. There was no such thing like failure to me and I guess this is this attitude of mine which helped me to continue with my work. At that stage, most of my work was based on trial and error method. I should try various available materials. Personally, another problem for me was I am severely allergic to dust and the place where I was working was completely filled with dust. So every now and then I used to start sneezing. And in order to prevent this, I used to tie multiple layers of handkerchief around my nose. This resulted in difficulty in breathing. But somehow I continue with my work. And the very first success I got was when I was studying the first year of my engineering. I had an idea in mind, I built a small prototype and it worked as I expected it to. I was very happy. First time in almost four years, I saw a glimpse of success. I was very happy. You can almost say I was floating in the bubble of success for about three days until one of my dear friends just popped this bubble in form of a news article. This was an article about a group of researchers who just demonstrated a method to trap the particulate matter. And as a matter of coincidence, their found method and my method were exactly the same. I did not know what was going on. Even though both the teams were working at the exact same time, they were the first ones to publish it. Which made my research almost equivalent to useless. My so-called piece of invention had already been done. I was heartbroken. At that time, I, I really did not know what to do. It was almost like I hit a dead end in my journey. So all I could do was I just sat on the stairs of my PG and I cried and I cried, cried till almost 3 a.m. in the morning. And at that moment, a small voice in my head said, if I can find one method to tackle this problem, definitely I can find another, and maybe a better one. Thus, the next day, I started my work again. But this time, I was more motivated, because I had a glimpse of success, and believe me, my friends, that was beautiful, and I wanted more of it. 
So the first step which I did was, I went to the library, I bought a few books about existing technologies to control the air pollution. I just studied about all the existing technologies because this time I really did not want any reputation. After working for a few days, I got another idea, a better idea. I built a small prototype to test it and this time my prototype worked very well. I was really happy because this model of mine was really better when compared to my previous model. I was really happy and at this moment of joy, it was around 11 p.m. the night and I started feeling dizzy and my nose started to bleed. I was really afraid. I did not know what was going on. At that time, all I could do was just write down about my newfound idea and just go to bed, hoping that I would wake up the next day. But next day, I woke up. I woke up fresh and I had an idea in hand. And I was really happy that I was alive. But when I thought about it, I just realized that it was just a silly feeling. Because, you know, between these two discoveries, I used to sleep hardly one or two hours a day. And this serious lack of sleep had caused that dizziness. And this is probably one of the most memorable days in my life. And that day was 7th of April, 2018. And that was the day when my company, Panjuli Labs, was found. And this is me standing next to the prototype which was invented on that day. After that, me and a group of three friends, we started working on this technology. Everyone pitched in new ideas. We worked on it. We improvised the product. We built new prototypes. And within a span of three months, we applied for the patent of this technology. And the technology invented on that day came to be known as the thin film air filtration technology. In order to understand this technology, I want all of you to just thank you. I want all of you to just imagine that you're sitting in a room and the room is completely filled with cigarette smoke. And obviously you're irritated by that. You know what's the easiest way to remove the smoke? You just have to take a towel, dip it in water, and just spin the towel around the room. What actually happens is the smoke will be gone within a few minutes. And you might ask how? The cigarette smoke is nothing but an aerosol which is suspended in air and the dampness in towel creates a perfect medium to trap that aerosol. And this forms the basis of the thin film technology. So what happens in thin film technology is that we suck the polluted air from outside. We regulate the factors like temperature and pressure in order to get better efficiency. Then we make the polluted air to pass through multiple layers of thin films. This is where the true magic happens. The particulate matter gets separated from the air and the air free from all the pollutants is released back into the atmosphere. Whereas the collected particulate matters are then sent into the storage section from where we'll take it out and use for a variety of applications. We saw the problem, we saw a solution. Now we'll just try to understand why this solution need to be implemented and why now is the right time. The particulate matter which we already talked about is one of the biggest threat to our planet. The particulate matter is the second biggest reason for the global warming, right after the greenhouse gases. The particulate matter emitted from various sources travel all the way up to the upper atmosphere. And the carbon-based particulate matter like soot have a very unique ability. They have the capacity to trap and release enormous amount of heat. And this results in heating of Earth's upper atmosphere. This, my friends, causes the global warming. And in turn, this results in the climate change. We started working on this, and in this journey, I was traveling in Bangalore with my two or three of my good friends, and we were stuck in a traffic jam. And the traffic jam was for about two hours. And after some time, I just realized that the upper layer of my mouth, there was some sort of a sticky substance. On careful examination, I realized that this was actually the particulate matter, and I was inhaling a huge amount of particulate matter. Even you, after a busy day in a city, when you come back home, you might feel a sort of a sticky residue sort of a substance on the surface of your face and hand. That is actually the particulate matter. And this proves that our ambient air is polluted with this tiny particulate matters. And this is when we decided we have to do something about it. And that is when we built a product called as the peepal tree. Peepal tree, like any normal tree, has a capacity to, pull, to purify the air. What a peepal tree does is, it absorbs the polluted air, traps the pollutant, and releases the fresh air back into the atmosphere. This can be installed in highly polluted areas like traffic junctions, 
bus stops, railway stations, industrial areas, etc. You might all remember, a few years ago, major Asian metropolitan cities like Delhi, Beijing, Shanghai saw a very unusual problem, a problem in the form of smog. Smog occurs when smoke combines with fog. This creates a very difficult situation where it's extremely hard to breathe and the visibility is reduced significantly. With the installation of products like PPAL3, such problems could be avoided. After this, we move to our next segment where we wanted to control the pollution right at the source. And that is when we developed our product, which has the capacity to tap the dust as soon as they're emitted. And we tried it out with an asphalt mixer plant. Asphalt is actually the machine which is used to create the tar, which in turn is used to create the roads. And this machine has a capacity to produce enormous amount of dust. And we built a product for this. And this was able to capture the, that large amount of dust. And this proved the capacity of the technology to handle very large volume of dust. After this, we moved to the next segment, a very interesting segment. That was the construction sector. If you see the Delhi pollution statistics, 25 to 30 percent of the particulate emission is actually caused from the construction sector. And that is why we decided we need to work on it. And we are now currently building a series of products which can capture the dust as soon as they are emitted during the construction, construction related, or the material processing processes. If you just Google the most, 25 most polluted cities in the world, 12 of them are from India. And as citizens, this is an alarming data. A few weeks ago, you all might remember, the world saw a rapid raise in temperature, affecting millions of people worldwide, and severely affecting the aquatic life. I know this is an enormous responsibility on our shoulders, but with collective effort from every single one of us, we can do it. We can defeat the climate change. In order to do this, me and my company are dedicated to provide series of products which will act as a perfect tool for the mankind for our battle against air pollution, global warming, and climate change.